Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the University of Oklahoma 2020 virtual commissioning ceremony. At this time, we ask you to please stand at your location for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by Captain Swanson. Uniform personnel, please render the appropriate hand salute. <laughs> Afternoon, sinners. Thanks for being here. Uh, has there ever been a better time for prayer than a time like this? I invite you to join me in praying in your tradition of faith as I pray in mine. God in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to gather here today, freely assembled, albeit distanced, at this university and across the country and even around the world via the miracle of modern technology. We're here to celebrate the graduation and commissioning of these fine young Americans into the United States Army. As they prepare to leave the safety of the leadership laboratory that is the ROTC program, I pray that they will all remember well what they have learned across the past four plus years and employ the lessons of life and leadership that have been sown into their hearts and into their beings. Encourage each in his or her endeavor to live above the common level of life. Make them to choose the harder, harder right instead of the easier wrong and to never be content with a half truth when the whole can be won. Only you, Father, know the stories that are yet to be written into their lives and we trust the divine appointments that you have ready for each of them to keep. Just as David had an appointment with the giant, Daniel with the lions, Philip with the Ethiopian eunuch, Mary had an appointment with the angel Gabriel, and Jesus Christ himself with the cross of Calvary. Each of these future lieutenants has people to meet and battles to fight that only you know about right now. I pray for patience and wisdom for the leaders who will enter their lives and who will continue to develop them. That's right, LT. The only easy day was yesterday. I pray for trust and obedience for the soldiers whom each will directly lead and influence. Your holy word says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I pray for ironclad relationships between these future lieutenants and their future soldiers. And I pray for each of these lieutenants. I would pray for them by name if there weren't 19 of them, but you know each of their names and each of their stories. I pray for a humility and a hunger to continue learning and growing at each new stage of their careers in every appointment that you have laid out for them in the days and years ahead. May this crop of future lieutenants, and indeed may all of us, seek to live out the words of your son, Jesus, as recorded in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Thank you for selfless servants like those in uniform, both here today and across the world, who are willing to live out those words and that great love for mankind every day. With grace and peace, in your holy name I pray, thank you for being the great friend and master of all. Amen and sooner strong, and be Navy. Amen. Amen. An integral part of Cadet Command ceremonies is the tribute to the pillars of our service and to our nation. Duty, honor, country. Duty, obedience and discipline performance, despite difficulty or danger. Duty requires self-responsibility and selfless devotion. Honor. Encompassing integrity and dedication. Honor is the thread which holds together the fabric of the army. Country. 
for which men and women have given their lives, our country shines as a light of freedom and dignity to the world. Thank you, cadets. It is now my pleasure to introduce the professor of military science for the University of Oklahoma, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Cryer. Hey all, what a great day to be a part of the United States Army and among such a great group of patriots. To everyone tuned into the University of Oklahoma Army ROTC commissioning, welcome and thank you for taking the time out of your day to celebrate our cadets' achievements. We have such a great program here at the University of Oklahoma. We will commission 25 in total this year and I'm honored to serve in this capacity as a professor of military science. Today we will execute virtually uh, with 19 of our students. Uh, we're all serving in challenging times with the COVID-19 pandemic, but it did not allow our course to deviate. We followed through with the same rigor as in-person classes and training to get to this first goal line for our sooner lieutenants. Life is about to get busy, but it will be fun and rewarding. I wish you all the very best as you continue to excel in the active army National Guard, and the United States Army Reserve. I've appreciated getting to know each and every one of you. And I certainly hope uh, that to see how your future goes uh, from here forward, please keep in touch. Now I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Brigadier General Tony Wright. Brigadier General Wright's service started as an active duty enlisted soldier in 1983 as a 13 Bravo cannon crewman. After his enlistment, he enrolled into ROTC at, a, uh, at the Ohio University at Athens, sir, we won't hold that against you, <laughs> where he earned recognition as distinguished military graduate while earning a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology Manufacturing in August 1985, and then received his commission into field artillery. Brigadier General Wright served on active duty until 1997, then started his uh, Army Reserve career thereafter. He served in a variety of assignments from platoon leader to division command, which brings us to his current assignment as the 98th Institutional Training Division Commanding General at Fort Benning, Georgia. Please help me welcome Brigadier General Wright. Sir. All right, thank you, uh, Colonel Cryer, for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today and to speak to the commissioning class of 2020 for the University of Oklahoma. Uh, confused sometimes when I say OU, it confuses people around the state of Oklahoma, but uh, great campus here, great opportunity for me to be here today. And I also want to thank Colonel Phil Taylor. Uh, several months ago, Phil asked me if I would be interested in coming and speaking at the commissioning ceremony. And I told him that, yes, I would very much be uh, willing to come do that. It's an opportunity for me to impart some of the wisdom and some of the things that I've learned through 31 years of commission service and hopefully give you a little bit of a jump start into your future careers. And it's a little bit different doing it this way. It's great to see everybody's faces on the screen. And uh, first thing I'd like to say is congratulations to you, your friends, and your families. I can't think of any better way to start a career than to start out as a second lieutenant in the United States Army. You're entering the Army at a time of unprecedented change, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Uh, you're also going to see some amazing things. You're going to travel the world. You're going to participate in things that your civilian counterparts can only dream of. I know that in this class, we have both active component commissioning soldiers, also uh, Reserve and National Guard. So congratulations uh, to you in, in being commissioned into those services and the things that you'll see going forward. This is truly an amazing opportunity for you to learn, to grow, and to develop yourselves as a leader. Oftentimes we look at a ceremony like this as the end, but I will say that this is truly the beginning of your life as a commissioned officer and, and the opportunities that you have before you are truly amazing and challenging at the same time. And I'm just thrilled for you, your family and friends and where you're at. If I would have asked you probably three or four months ago where you would be on May 8th, you would have said I would be standing on the campus of the University of Oklahoma receiving my commission in a ceremony. Uh, as everybody knows, COVID-19 has changed that and changed drastically. And what I'd like to point out is the, how fast and how rapid and how drastic these changes come about 
And that brings me to the first lesson that you need to learn that there will be change. And you as a commissioned officer will lead that change. You will be responsible. Your soldiers are looking to you to lead and you need to do that out of confidence, not out of fear. These times are challenging and they're difficult and they induce fear, but your soldiers are looking to you as a model of leadership and they will model what they see in you. And again, please be confident and lead and understand that as you go throughout your career, especially in the days we have now with the increasing technology, there will always be change and we'll constantly be adapting and be comfortable with that and embrace that change. We also live in a very complex world. We talk about cyber and we talk about space and I had the opportunity earlier in the year to tour several of the combatant commands and they were participating in a global exercise. And what they noticed during that global exercise and previous global exercises is that whoever initiated action in space first won space and whoever won space won the war. How does that tie in with being a second lieutenant platoon leader somewhere out in the field? And how it ties in there is with mission command. If you look at the training that you've received here, the training that you will receive in the future on mission command and operating under commander's intent, there's a very real possibility on future battlefields we won't have air superiority, first time that's happened since World War II. We won't have the ability to navigate, GPS can be spoofed or down. We won't be able to communicate digitally or through voice. You will be left to operate under the intent that last received from your commander. I had the opportunity several years ago to tour the Civil War battlefield at Antietam. The tour guide took us around the battlefield and he showed us where all the units were positioned, where the battle was going on, how it progressed. And he drove us again a great distance to where Lee's headquarters was set up. And he talked about General Robert E. Lee and what a great leader he was and how prior to the battle he issued his commander's intent to his subordinates and allowed them to execute. Now, for those who don't know, I ride horses and I also run occasionally. And uh, what I realized as he said that was is that it wasn't some stroke of brilliance. Lee absolutely had no other choice. By the time a commander on the field drafted his notes, handed it to a runner who ran possibly 30 minutes to an hour to Lee's headquarters, allowed Lee to digest that information. Lee writes a response, hands it back to the, to the subordinate runner who takes it back to the commander in the field. The battle is no longer there. The battle has moved on and it's irrelevant information. That ties very closely with the conditions that you likely will face on a modern battlefield. We simply won't be able to communicate. The pace of the battle is going to be extremely quickly, and that's why mission command is so important. And it ties equally well with commanders uh, with critical thinking. When you're executing that commander's intent, you have to be confident in your ability to critically think, to analyze the challenges you face, and compare that with the intent that you've received, and come up with a logical solution. We can't do that out of fear. We have to do that out of confidence, and that's where developing your skills as a lieutenant will prepare you for those challenges that you'll someday face. Another thing that I would suggest is that when you get to your first unit of assignment, you find a mentor. There are people out there who have been where you're at. They have the knowledge and the skills and the ability to guide you and make you a better, stronger leader for your soldiers. And then on the other hand, I would also say to be a mentor, to find those soldiers that you can interact with, who have the potential that you can grow and develop because you literally are building the Army of the future. It starts today with your commissioning and it moves throughout your career. So find a mentor and be a mentor. The other thing I will say is that you, you will leave a legacy. Whether you've thought about that up until this point in your career or your life, you may not know, but you are building a legacy and wherever you go, you leave a legacy. And what I encourage you to do is sit back, think about the legacy that you want to build, how do you get there, and understand that you're leaving it as you go. And I would encourage you to leave a positive legacy as you go. Another thing I had an opportunity as an active duty battery commander, I had a lieutenant, platoon leader, and he told me that the only thing in life that mattered were people and relationships. And over the years, I've come to realize the wisdom in those words. Not for me, but for the units that I serve, the soldiers that I serve, those relationships are so critical in developing the bonds where you can act, interact, and achieve and work through stressful, complex situations. So Focus on the relationships, not for what you can get, but for what you can give. We often hear leaders talk about the Army values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. And I will tell you from where I stand and from the experience that I have, I believe selfless service to be the foundation of what the other Army values are built upon. And if you think about it, how can I exercise personal courage 
if this is really about self-preservation and me being ahead and getting ahead of, of my peers. So for me, selfless service is the bedrock and, and those relationships, the being the mentor, that all ties in with that selfless service that you really need to exhibit and develop in yourself so that you can make the unit that you serve and the soldiers that you serve with stronger and better. I'll also say that most of what we do is not inherently fun or unfun. If you look at it, some of it's gonna be great and amazing. You think about airborne school, you think about going on exercises and things in the army that are enjoyable and fun. There are some things that you do that will not be fun. But I will tell you as a leader, as a second lieutenant, you probably underestimate your ability to influence the attitude, the perceptions, and the morale within your organization. And I encourage you to take the opportunity to foster a great command climate within your organization so that those people can enjoy their service to their country, that they can be productive and feel fulfilled in what they're doing and become better leaders for our nation. You're getting ready to roll off again uh, into commission service. This is going to be the greatest challenge, the greatest opportunity, and really the best time of your life. I really envy where you're at, where you're at with your lives, the things that you're going to embark on, the things that you're going to see, Again, I just wish you the very best. Congratulations on your commissioning. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you so much for uh, taking part some time out of your schedule. Uh, on behalf of uh, the OU Army RTC uh, class of 2020, uh, we'd like to they'd like to present you with this gift. But sir, uh, once again, thank you so much. We will wash our hands after this. But, um, <laughs> And I also have a uh, coin for uh, for the time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Sir. Thank you. Now the time has come for the cadets to take the commissioning oath that officially governs them as second lieutenants in the United States Army. The oath of office is taken only by those selected to receive a commission and that have completed all necessary requirements. The commission is a document attesting that the President of the United States reposes special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of the individual concerned, appointing them as a commissioned officer. Administering the oath of office is Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Cryer. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. In the Army of the United States. The Army of the United States. I state your full name. I am Randall Gregory. To solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. To swear. To support and defend. To support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. All 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 foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. <laughs> that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. Say. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose, purpose of evasion. Then I will well and faithfully, I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which, upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. To all the National Guard commissionees, please remain standing and all other commissionees hide your video. At this time, Army National Guard Captain David Swanson will minister the National Guard. You're going to the National Guard. To my National Guard cadets, if I may for just a second, offer to you my privilege to, uh, to lead you specifically the SMP program across these uh, past three years. I uh, joined you all when you were in your sophomore year and we have truly seen you fly. So it is my privilege to minister to you the uh, National Guard Oath of Office. The oath is uniquely different that it reflects service to state. 
as well as nation uh, chamber. Yes, National Park Cadets. Um, you will repeat after me. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the Governor of the State of Oklahoma. And the Governor of the State of Oklahoma. That I make this obligation freely. That I make this obligation freely. Without any mental reservations. Without, without any, any mental reservations. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of second lieutenant. I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of second lieutenant. In the Army National Guard. In the Army National Guard. Of the state of Oklahoma. Of the state of Oklahoma. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, guards and members. As is tradition in the United States Army, the newly commissioned officers will receive their first salute from a non-commissioned officer. The salute emphasizes the role that NCOs, the backbone of the Army, play in the professional development of every officer. NCOs will advise and support officers at every stage of their career. It is tradition that newly commissioned officers give a silver dollar to the first NCO that salutes them in recognition of the support NCOs have already given and will continue to give them in their career. The first salute symbolizes the acknowledgement of these new lieutenants into the officer corps, along with the respect and courtesy that accompanies their new rank. At this time, we will virtually spotlight each cadet as they are pinned the rank of second lieutenant and render their first salute. Second Lieutenant Alexander Alou was born in San Francisco, California on March 29, 1997. He graduated from Dawson High School in Lafayette, Colorado. Second Lieutenant Alou will receive his Bachelor of Science degree in Construction Science and commission in the Colorado Army National Guard as an aviation officer. Good afternoon. I will have my gold bar pinned by my girlfriend, Mackenzie Kasser. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, U.S. Army. Sir Strong, sir. Army Strong. Lower. Second Lieutenant. Ryan Ben was born in Sulphur, Oklahoma on August 20th, 1984. He graduated from Ardmore High School in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Ben will receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science. He will commission active duty as an Army officer. Good afternoon. My gold bar will be penned by my mother, Terry Wells, and my father, Terry Ben. I will now render my first salute to Petty Officer First Class, Chad Chambers, Fire Control, U.S. Navy. So not coming through. Sooner strong, sir. Army strong. Second Lieutenant Nicholas Bishop was born in Norman, Oklahoma on April 13, 1998. He graduated from Norman North High School in Norman, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Bishop will receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminology and will he commission active duty as an ordnance officer, explosive ordnance disposal. Good afternoon. 
I'll have my second lieutenant rank pinned on me this evening by my lovely mother, Susanna Bishop. And running in my first loop will be my father, Sergeant John Bishop, U.S. Army Retired. Damn proud of you, sir. The oppressor libre. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Lydia Bono, Lydia Bono was born in Plano, Texas on October 27, 1997. She graduated from Allen High School in Allen, Texas. Second Lieutenant Bono will receive her Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology and she will commission active duty as an infantry officer. She is the first OU Army ROTC female cadet to commission into the Infantry Corps. Good afternoon. I will have my gold bar pinned by my father, Mitchell Bono, my mother, Judy Bono, and my sisters, Rachel, Jenna, and Audrey Bono. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, U.S. Army. So strong, ma'am. Queen of Battle. Follow me. Second Lieutenant Olin Field was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He graduated from Southmore High School in Moore, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Phil will receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in Journalism, and he will commission in the United States Army Reserve as an engineer officer. Good afternoon. I'll have my gold bar pinned on by my mother, Gayla, and my father, Joseph. I will now render my first salute to Master Sergeant Anthony Lacey, Field Artillery, U.S. Army. Sir Strong, sir. Army Strong. Boomer. Second Lieutenant David Golden was born in Fort Worth, Texas on November 24, 1998. He graduated from Calvary Chapel Christian School in Las Vegas, Nevada. Second Lieutenant Golden was, will graduate with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Philosophy and commission in the Oklahoma Army National Guard as a field artillery officer. Good afternoon. I will have my gold bar pinned on by my girlfriend, Bailey Chris. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, U.S. Army. Sir Strong, sir. King of Battle, Sergeant. Boomer. Second Lieutenant Alejandro Gonzalez was born in El Paso, Texas on July 30th, 1997. He graduated from MacArthur High School in Lawton, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Gonzalez will receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in History and will commission active duty as an Air Defense Artillery Officer. Good afternoon. I will now have my gold bars pinned by my girlfriend, Dorothy Lyman. I will now render my first salute to my father, George Ruprecht, Sergeant Major, Air Defense Artillery, U.S. Army. Sooner strong, sir. Army strong. First to fire. Second Lieutenant Melissa Guevara was born in McKinney, Texas on March 14th, 1996. She graduated from Medill High School in Medill, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Guevara will receive her Bachelor of Science degree in biology and commission in the United States Army Reserve as a medical service officer. Good afternoon. I will now have my mother uh, pin my gold bar. And I will now render my first lead to Mass Sergeant Anthony Lacey, Phil Artilly, United States Army. So strong, ma'am. So strong. 
Don't hurt me. Second Lieutenant Julie Harris was born in El Paso, Texas on September 9, 1997. She graduated from Lee Vining High School in Lee Vining, California. Second Lieutenant Harris will receive her Bachelor of Arts and Sciences degree in Criminology and commission in the Oklahoma Army National Guard as an aviation officer. She is the first OU Army ROTC female cadet to commission into the Aviation Corps. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I will be having my gold bar pinned by my father, Don Harris, my mother, Patricia Harris, and my sister, Diana Harris, who is currently serving overseas in Iraq. Yeah. I will now render my first salute to Staff Sergeant Gustavo Terrazas, Signal, United States Army. Honori familia, ma'am. Trust and fidelity. Second Lieutenant Albert Heredia was born in Bakersfield, California on October 12, 1994. He graduated from Golden Valley High School in Bakersfield, California. Second Lieutenant Heredia will receive his Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering and commission in the Oklahoma Army National Guard as an engineer officer. Good afternoon. Today's a great day. I'm going to be pinned by my girlfriend, Alexis Dorio. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, United States Army. So strong, sir. Army strong. Boomer. Second Lieutenant Alana Hummison was born in Plano, Texas on July 9, 1998. She graduated from Bishop Lynch High School in Dallas, Texas. Second Lieutenant Hummison will receive her Bachelor of Arts degree in European Studies and commission active duty as a quartermaster officer. Good afternoon. I'll have my gold bar pinned by my father, Alan Hummison, and my mother, Melissa Hummison. I will now render my first salute to Master Sergeant Anthony Lacey, Field Artillery, U.S. Army. So strong, ma'am. Army strong, Master Sergeant. Boomer. Second Lieutenant Ethan Lutz was born in Los Angeles, California on January 26, 1998. He graduated from Marcus High School in Flower Mound, Texas. Second Lieutenant Lutz will receive his Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice and commission active duty as an infantry officer. Good afternoon. I'll have my gold bars pinned by my parents, Christopher and Francis Lutz. I will now render my first salute to Chief Master Sergeant Benito Salinas, U.S. Air Force. How do you, Lieutenant? Oh, shoot. On June 14, 1996, he graduated from Oklahoma Bible Academy in Eden, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Nisa will receive his Bachelor of Science degree in Biology and will commission in the Oklahoma Army National Guard as a medical service officer. Good afternoon. I'll be pinned today by my good friend, Jeffrey Shell. Thank you, Jeff. No problem. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, U.S. Army. Strong, sir. Army strong. Boomer. Second Lieutenant Caleb Nosak was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma on September 13, 1996. He graduated from Owasso High School in Owasso, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Nosak will receive his Master's of Science degree in Structural Engineering and will commission in the Texas Army National Guard as an infantry officer. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm gathered here by a lot of my friends and family. My 
uncle, Major Shane King, retired, is going to cut off my cadet rank, and my sister, Grace, is going to pin on my second lieutenant rank. Do this. I'll now render my first salute to my uncle Joseph Nosak, former Petty Officer First Class, United States Seabees. Cool. Second Lieutenant Brandon Razor was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma on June 17, 1996. He graduated from Mustang High School in Mustang, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Razor will receive his Bachelor of Science degree in aviation and he will commission actively as an aviation officer. Good afternoon. I will have my gold bar pinned by my father, Rick Razor, my mother, Shireen Razor, and my girlfriend, Victoria Quick. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, U.S. Army. Sir Strong. Army Strong. Boomer. Second Lieutenant Ian Skinner was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma on June 28, 1994. He graduated from Orlando High School in Orlando, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Skinner will receive his Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering, and he will commission active duty as an armor officer. Good afternoon. Today, my gold bar will be pinned by my father, Matthew Skinner, my mother, Kathleen Skinner, my brother, Jonathan Skinner, and my grandpa, Coast Guard veteran and World War II veteran, Warren Blodgett. I will now render my first salute to Master Sergeant Anthony Lacey, Field Artillery, United States Army. Sir Strong, sir. Army Strong, Master Sergeant. Boomer. Second Lieutenant Yadira Torres was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma on March 8, 1998. She graduated from Southeast High School in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Torres will receive her Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Design and commission active duty as an engineer officer. Good afternoon. I will now have my gold bar pinned by my father, Francisco Torres, and my mother, Juana Torres. Thank you. I will now render my first salute to Master Sergeant Michael Joseph, United States Air Force retired, advanced air surveillance technician. Sooner strong, ma'am. Army strong. Boomer. Whoa. Second Lieutenant Clayton Webb was born in Frisco, Texas on May 12, 1997. He graduated from Frisco Centennial High School in Frisco, Texas. Second Lieutenant Webb will receive his Bachelor in Business Administration degree in Management Information Systems and Accounting and commission in the Oklahoma Army National Guard as a military intelligence officer. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm super grateful to be here, surrounded by my friends and family. I truly want to be here if it weren't for them. I'm super blessed to have my gold bar pinned on me by my amazing parents, Chris and Lynn Webb, and my best friend, Frank Webb. I will now render my first salute to Sergeant First Class Jacob Rubel, Infantry, United States Army. Sir Strong, sir. Army Strong. Boomer. 
Second Lieutenant Ross Young was born in Chicago, Illinois on April 13, 1985. He graduated from William Frem High School in Palantine, Illinois. Second Lieutenant Young will receive his Master of Arts degree in Human Relations and will commission active duty as a transportation officer. Good afternoon. I will have my gold bar pinned by my girlfriend, Brittany. I will now render my first salute to Master Sergeant Anthony Lacey, Field Artillery, U.S. Army. So strong, sir. Army strong. Boomer. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to the Army's newest second lieutenant. <laughs> please rise and join us for the playing of the OU chant followed by the Army song. Congratulations, 2020. Homer. Homer, sir.